two weeks out, the icing on the cake is going to be either the Letro, if we do decide to go that route, and the Halo, which is the real, you know, cherry on top to this whole thing. What's up guys, Derek from ReplaceMarnDates.com. Today we're going to be reacting to a cycle outline. I received a few DMs about this. People have been asking me to cover this uh, IFBB Pros pre-contest stack and just sort of give my feedback. Obviously, I'm not an IFBB Pro. I'm just some dude on a computer who finds this stuff really interesting and used to, you know, abuse these hormones to myself. And I sort of have a good uh, general outline on what I feel are, you know, best practice and most effective ways to utilize these compounds. So, you know, expectedly people wanted to get my insight on this. So I wanted to give my feedback and surprisingly, a lot of the top IFBB pros, they're just so genetically gifted that anything they do works exceptionally well. So they don't really go out of their way to, you know, deep dive into this research. They just, you know, do whatever their coach tells them to do. And they assume it's, you know, the right way to go about things. So obviously take what I say with a grain of salt here. That's just my personal opinion. It could be, you know, co totally contradictory to what is your, you know, stance on it or his stance, obviously. So um, not a personal attack on this guy, just, you know, a commentary on his uh, cycle here. So he says uh, he's five weeks out. He went from 194 to 192 in his last update. He has like a whole outline about his training and his diet, which is obviously important, but everyone wants to find out about the drugs. So that's the thing I'm gonna be commentating on. Meal five, six ounces of protein, also one cup of veggies. That hasn't changed. That's been consistent pretty much my entire prep. And then meal six is where it really changes now. It used to be six ounces of mega fit meal steak, the Angus steak, and now that's changed to just six egg whites and three whole eggs with some veggies. So the pain is really starting, that's for sure. And especially now that he increased my cardio, it used to be 35 minutes fasted five times per week. Now it's 40 minutes fasted in the morning on the stairs. Yeah. Gear, your favorite part. <laughs> Gear, your favorite part. <laughs> I feel like these guys do get annoyed when they have to outline their stuff because it's sort of, again, the problem with outlining cycles that uh, I think the main reason why a lot of pros have problem with it is not necessarily that they're trying to like persuade people to not use gear and they're trying to not set a bad example. It's more so to do with they don't want the cycle to, you know, take away from their hard work, which should be noted, this guy is diced, he's, you know, huge, he's a good competitor, nothing that you take can replace the amount of work it takes to step on stage and look, you know, peeled and dry. There's no, there's no, you know, obviously drugs will, you know, help you retain muscle and deficit, add to this, you know, cosmetic grainy dry look, retain the tissue itself, but literally doing the dieting and doing the cardio and lifting the weights, like you still have to do all that. So don't, you know, take anything away from this guy as we get into this. Goodbye, testosterone, no more, no more test. So we pulled tests already, so that's gone. This is gonna give us a, a much better idea of where my weight actually is. And to see, kind of gauge where, where my conditioning, at least accurately, where my conditioning is at. This is not unusual for me to be pulling tests out so early. Um, we increased the trend from 150 to 300. Mass has stayed the same at 400. Caber is 0.5. Okay, so obviously whatever he outlines in the next minute here is probably going to further provide further insight, but he's gonna probably list off a bunch of things and it's gonna overwhelm me to the point where I forget to say something else first, but Pulling test at five weeks out, I see the logic. If you are, you know, holding water or something, then seeing what your actual conditioning is by pulling it out first does, you know, make sense. However, once you pull out your source of aromatization, I'm gonna obviously I need to see what else he's doing first, but obviously he has trenbolone in there, which is a fairly, I guess, reasonable dose. Like a lot of guys are doing like 600 milligrams plus, which is completely unnecessary in my opinion for most guys and um, the math is a reasonable dose as well 
Again, this guy's a top IFBB pro, and a lot of people are going to think these doses are mild for this guy's you know, size and condition. So this is not unreasonable from what I've seen personally. And um, the stack itself is like pretty, you know, kind of like the gold standard, the test, the trend, the mast pre-contest. And then I'm assuming he's going to throw in some DHT derivatives for hardening up in the last couple of weeks. And that's sort of just my prediction here. But uh, before I comment, my stance on the testosterone being pulled, let's just keep going here. Twice a week, Aromacin, 12 and a half, twi twi uh, twice per week. Clen was going, remember, it was going from an alternating 40 to 80 or 60 to 80. Now it's just 80 straight through. It's a, it's a split every six, uh, every six hours. It's 40, so it's 80 total for the day. And finally... 50 milligrams of Winnie per day. So he didn't say if that was oral Winnie or injectable, but uh, should be noted. So I'm assuming he had the aromacin in there to, you know, deal with whatever excessive aromatization he had from the test. I feel like winning your pre-contest though, he has enough master on in there to antagonize estrogen to the point where I don't imagine it would even be necessary to have aromacin at this far out, um, especially pulling the test. I don't see the need to keep the aromacin in there. Like that's just unnecessarily inhibiting a pathway, which is already subpar at this point. If you are in fact cutting test to zero, you're gonna be inhibiting a myriad of mechanisms that are responsible for fulfilling physiologic functions, including fat loss and muscle retention. So, as well as the IGF-1 pathway itself. Forward now, four weeks out, which is coming up pretty soon. Today is Wednesday. One thing that's good to know too is his clen dosage is not excessive. I see some guys doing 120 micrograms plus. Like clen is a lot stronger than people think, and it's one of those drugs where it's not very forgiving if you overdo it. So tapering up to 80 over the course of his entire prep seems pretty reasonable, and I don't see a need to go above and beyond that personally. Okay. Four weeks out is gonna be on Friday. So in two days, I send progress pictures again to Andrew. It's not unusual that we're going to be now starting to either three weeks out or four weeks out, starting, you know, maybe adding Novadex or something like that. Okay, so adding in Novadex, if your test is pulled and that you already have an AI in there, first of all, the AI is unnecessary to keep in there. Adding Novadex, a selective estrogen receptor modulator, to deal with estrogen receptor activation that is already not occurring to begin with via a complete lack of testosterone in the body and a heavily antagonizing compound like Masteron, that is just further inhibiting. Well, I don't even think it's further inhibiting. It's already zero. It's just adding another level of oxidative stress unnecessarily to the body and killing any kind of... The IGF-1 pathway is already severely inhibited as is. I don't see the I understand trying to see what your body composition actually looks like under the water, but adding in, you know, a serum when you have zero testosterone, like you're shut down. You have no endogenous aromatization occurring. You're on Trenbolone and Masteron only as your anabolic agents. You have no estrogen supporting so many critical functions, not just in a health context. Obviously, everyone's going to say, you know, health is, who cares? It's out the window pre-contest. So who cares about, you know, four to five weeks of neuro and cardiotoxicity? The fact is fat loss is severely inhibited when you crush estrogen to zero, as is muscle retention. There's so much data showing anabolic steroids on their own, as well as in conjunction with exogenous estradiol. Even Trend, this is a perfect example. There was a study showing the effect Trend had on muscle growth in cattle on its own, and then the addition of just adding in 17 beta estradiol to that Trend balone to the same, to the cattle, severely, significantly increased their muscle mass growth just by adding in a sufficient source of estradiol that was not being, you know, provided by that trenbolone, which is not a potent substrate for aromatase and does not provide enough estrogen, and as well as having an antagonizing DHT derivative like uh, Masteron in there. So crushing estrogen to zero just to see what your body composition looks like five weeks out, I feel like is a strategy that shoots yourself in the foot in many aspects and is not really worth, you know, pursuing and is just, you know, unnecessarily inhibiting several things in the body that should otherwise be, especially when you're at your most vulnerable state for, you know, muscle loss and you're trying to get as shredded as possible. Why would you inhibit fat loss, IGF-1 and muscle growth, like, or muscle retention, I should say. It's just, it's just uh, bad, stupid practice in my opinion, not even to mention the deleterious outcomes of having zero estrogen on your health. Increasing maybe even the mass just a little bit, you know, to 500, which we did 
last prep and it seemed to work extremely well. And it won't be unusual for us to increase the Winstrol to maybe 75 and even throw in the Proviron, which we haven't even thrown that in there. And that really makes a huge difference. I know in my physique, as far as my legs go. I guess anecdotally, if something works, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But adding in Proviron, which, you know, binds up SHBG, frees up more testosterone, antagonizes estrogen to some extent. Like, what's the point at this point? You're just adding another oral to the equation when you already have, you have zero test to free up from SHBG to begin with. You have no estrogen in your body. Like, what is the point of adding this on top of 500 milligrams of Mastron? Like, I don't. You, I don't get the point when there's no test in the system. They get granite hard as soon as these extra hardeners are, are being thrown in. I get the Winnie. That makes sense. But I don't really. Proviron, just to me, it seems a bit overkill at this point. Like, frankly, there's some of this stuff is like, I don't think really is going to enhance the look more at this point. Once you start throwing the kitchen sink on top of the kind of meat and potatoes of the cycle, especially when the main thing that would sort of provide the real backbone in my opinion being the testosterone is pulled out like you have no estrogen here so you're just drying out like crazy four or three weeks out i think it's early and i think it's going to inhibit him getting as lean as he could otherwise and being as full probably and having you know ensuring maximum levels of all the other things i mentioned and then two weeks out the icing on the cake is going to be either the Letro, if we do decide to go that route, and the Halo, which is the real, you know, cherry on top to this whole thing. Okay, so Letro makes absolutely no sense at this point. He has Aromacin in there. He hasn't stated if he's pulled it, but let's just assume it's still in there because he didn't say otherwise. He has no testosterone. He has a serum already taking care of estrogen receptor activation. And then he's adding in Letro to literally just nuke aromatase like you have no testosterone aromatizing into estrogen to begin with unless you have a super long ester in there and you had such a high dose that the clearance time was so long that five weeks wasn't sufficient to clear it which i doubt but at the same time i just you know maybe the letro would make sense for whatever remnant test is there if you had a very long ester and you weren't already like i just don't see the point on top of that personally like whatever effect you're going to get from nuking estrogen You've already achieved. I don't see the uh, additional benefit at this point. Adding in the, uh, did you say Halo? Obviously, that is a really good hardener for some guys. Uh, most people I know don't really see a benefit above and beyond, you know, having a high dose of master on in there already. But, you know, obviously, anecdotally, if it works and it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's just continue. Now, we've used, we've gone by on preps without using it, but I'm going to assume that since this is the Arnold Classic, we are gonna go all in and we're gonna go in as, as hard and as conditioned as possible. Um, at this point, last prep, when I was getting ready for the Puerto Rico, it looked like I could jump on stage already. But then again, we had to hold the conditioning for an extra three weeks, which definitely took a mental toll on me. And also I think on my body, my body just started getting a little bit tired. So if we time this correctly, we should be right on on right on point for that same type of hard conditioning going into the Arnold Classic with a at least a little bit fresher. I was a, I was tired already, moving and and personal things going on. I'm a little bit more relaxed this prep, so that is definitely in my benefit right now. Okay, so yeah, it's basically my overall stance. I feel like the. Uh... You know, pulling of test was early. I feel like just to, you know, see how dry you look five weeks out seems completely unnecessary to me. I feel like you're inhibiting the overall progress that you could be, you know, you come in leaner, harder, and fuller should you have kept it in. And if the attempt to crush estrogen, like you don't need to do both things. Like why would you use inhibit aromatase and drop your test? Like the point of crushing aromatase would be if you had remnant aromatization occurring via testosterone being held in until you know one to two weeks out not to drop test at five weeks out in you know the idea being that it's going to clear your system in time for the show and then add in ais on top of that once you already have zero estrogen to begin with it's just adding extra layers of oxidative stress and fighting homeostatic mechanisms in the body that are going to inhibit your potential in my opinion so take from that what you will guys this is just my uh, stance on it quite a few guys have asked me to cover it and uh 
again, can, I'm not a coach. I'm not an IFBB pro. I'm not anything, you know, crazy in this industry. I'm just some guy who finds the stuff interesting and does, uh, you know, commentary on my own opinions on it. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredays.com if you want to get emailed any articles I put out that are far more insightful and kind of elaborate than these videos where I sort of just ramble and have concise subsections with clinical studies reference that I pull my data from often and you can further research yourself. Those will get emailed to you immediately if you sign up to the mailing list below in the video description. Check me out on Instagram, follow me there, at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, BitChute, TikTok, Apple Podcasts, wherever I am. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.